So there's a second class of stereoisomers known as diastereomers. And diastereomers are molecules containing at least two stereogenic centers or chiral centers with a maximum number of stereoisomers equivalent to two raised to the nth power where n is the number of chiral centers or stereogenic centers. So for example, if we have a molecule with two stereogenic centers, then the maximum number of stereoisomers possible is four. With two stereogenic centers, there can be up to four stereoisomers based on the equation or the formula. Although some of them may actually be the same identical molecule. So that means that two of the drawn stereoisomers are actually mirror images of one another that are superimposable. So any mirror images that are superimposable are considered identical molecules. Some of the stereoisomers will not be mirror images of each other, and these are the diastereomers. Okay, so diastereomers are non-mirror image stereoisomers. So let's say that we have a molecule with two chiral centers or two stereogenic centers. That means the maximum number of uh, stereoisomers would be four. And so let's say that um, they are all stereoisomers. Okay, and so the first pair, let's say, a and B are enantiomers of each other. And then we have a second pair, uh, C and D, which are also enantiomers of one another. But then the first pair and the second pair are non-mirror images, and so or non-mirror images of each other, and so they are actually diastereomers of one another. So here's an example. We have 2,3-dibromopentane. And so how do we um, identify all the stereoisomers for this compound? Well, the very first step is to draw the structure and then find the stereogenic centers or the chiral centers. And so here's the structure of 2,3-dimbromopentane, and you can see that uh, it contains two stereogenic centers. You can see that this carbon contains a total of four uh, different groups. This carbon over here also contains a total of four different groups. And so you can see that it has two stereogenic centers. So that means that it can have up to four stereoisomers. So that's the first step. Identify the stereogenic centers and then calculate how many possible stereoisomers this molecule can have. So now that you've identified all of the chiral centers and that you've calculated the maximum number of stereoisomers possible, then you can go ahead and draw the mirror image of the compound. So here we have the structure of the compound and its mirror image. So now that you've drawn the mirror image of the compound, the next thing that we need to figure out is whether the two images are superimposable or non-superimposable mirror images. If they are superimposable, then you know that those two images are identical molecules. Otherwise, they are enantiomers. And so um, here's the mirror image labeled B, and you can see that uh, A here, the, the molecule that's labeled A, is the uh, mirror image of B, right? And so if you rotate this about 180 degrees, then all the carbon bond or the, all the carbon atoms will all line up, right? So rotate this and it's going to look like this right here. So you can see that the carbon atoms and the bonds will perfectly align with each other. But then when you look at the other groups, such as the hydrogens and the bromines, you can see that in B, the bromine atom is oriented at the back of the molecule and hydrogen is at the front. But over here on A, you can see that hydrogen is at the back and bromine is at the front. And so when you line them up, when you stack them together, the hydrogens and bromines will not perfectly align. And so A and B here are therefore completely different compounds and so they are enantiomers. They are non-superimposable mirror images. So now we've identified two of the four possible stereoisomers of this compound. So the next step now is to determine the rest of the stereoisomers, the other two stereoisomers. And so the easiest way to do that is to pick one of the enantiomers that we just discovered earlier and then switch the positions of the hydrogen and the bromine on one stereogenic center. Okay, and so this new molecule is now different from the first two, the enantiomers that we looked at earlier. 
And so here's one of the enantiomers. Okay, so we picked A. And then notice that it has hydrogen and bromine right here, and same thing over here. So we're going to pick these two right here, this stereogenic center right here. And so we're going to switch the positions of the hydrogen and the bromine. So now we have the bromine at the back and the hydrogen at the front. So this molecule labeled C is completely different from molecules A and B because we switched uh, the positions of the hydrogen and the bromine on one stereogenic center. And so now, once you've drawn uh, this molecule, then f uh, draw its mirror image. So here's the mirror image of C. So we have it labeled D here and try to see if these two molecules are enantiomers or not, right? Are the two images superimposable or not superimposable? So that would be the next step here. So the next question here now is, are the molecules C and D non-superimposable? And if they are non-superimposable mirror images, then they must be enantiomers of one another. And so if you rotate this again and line them up with the molecule D, you can see that uh, when you rotate this 180 degrees, you can see that the hydrogen will now be at the at the front and the bromine will now be at the back. And so when you look at uh, the hydrogen and bromine for D, you can see that it's the exact opposite. And so C and D must be uh, two different compounds and therefore enantiomers of one another. So this is our second pair of enantiomers labeled C and D. So now we've identified all four stereoisomers for 2,3-dibromopentane. We identified that A and B here are enantiomers of one another. And then C and D here are also enantiomers of one another. But then when you look at A and C, these two are diastereomers. A and D are also diastereomers. B and C, B and D are also diastereomers. And so the pair of the first pair of enantiomers are diastereomers of the second pair of enantiomers. So if you analyze the structures here, you can see that A and C are not mirror images. A and D are not mirror images, and they're non-superimposable. Same thing with B and C. B and C are not mirror images of one another, and they are non-superimposable. And so that's basically what makes them diastereomers of one another. So here's a practice problem. Label the stereogenic centers in each compound and then draw all possible stereoisomers. So let's take a look at the first compound here on the left and identify the stereogenic centers. So you can see that when you look at this carbon atom right here, that it has a total of four different groups. So you have a chlorine atom, carbon that's bonded to a methyl group, there's a carbon here that's bonded to an oxygen. And we also have a hydrogen that's bonded to this. And so you can see that this is a chiral carbon or a stereogenic center, stereogenic carbon. And so we can label this and circle it. And then we can look at other carbon atoms here and see if they are stereogenic. So when you look at this carbon right here, this is actually also stereogenic because uh, it has four different groups. So you have hydroxy group, you have a carbon bonded to a carbon, a carbon bonded to a chlorine, and then a hydrogen atom bonded to this carbon. And so this is also a stereogenic center. And so because it has two stereogenic centers, the maximum number of stereoisomers must be four, right? So n equals two. And so two raised to the nth power would be four. All right, so we have a total of four stereoisomers. So now that you've identified the maximum number of stereoisomers possible for the molecule, you can go ahead and draw the structure of the molecule and arrange the groups of atoms arbitrarily around the chiral centers. So let's do that. So here's my first structure. And so I arbitrarily positioned the chlorine so that it's facing towards the front and then the hydrogen facing towards the back. Same thing over here. So the hydrogen is facing towards the back and my hydroxy group facing towards the front. 
and you can see that these are my chiral centers here. So the next step now, after drawing the uh, structure and their three-dimensional orientations, then you can go ahead and um, draw its mirror image. So here's the mirror image of the molecule. So we can just label this A and B here. And so you can see that when you rotate this molecule 180 degrees, then the carbon atoms will perfectly align with each other. However, the, the other substituents will not, right? For example, the chlorine, if you rotate this 180 degrees, then the chlorine that was originally up front will now be at the back. And then the hydrogen that was originally at the back will now be up front. But over here in its mirror image, the chlorine and the hydrogen, uh, or the chlorine is still facing up front, towards the front, and the hydrogen is facing towards the back. And so the, these two substituents, along with uh, hydrogen and the hydroxy groups, uh, won't be lining up with each other. And so A and B here, therefore, are non-superimposable mirror images, which are enantiomers of one another. And now we have to identify the other two stereoisomers that are possible for this molecule. And so the easiest way to do that, again, is to pick one of these enantiomers, and then we're going to modify and switch the positions of the substituents connected to one chiral center, or one stereogenic center. So we can switch the hydrogen and the chlorine's position, or the hydrogen and the hydroxy's position. So let's choose hydrogen and chlorine here. So we're going to draw the same exact uh, structure here, except the chlorine atom will now be oriented at the back, and then the hydrogen will now be oriented at the front. So here you can see that I've switched the positions of the hydrogen and the chlorine atom here. So now hydrogen is oriented at the front, whereas the chlorine is now facing towards the back. And then I also labeled this molecule C because these two molecules A and C are different molecules. They're non-superimposable here. You can see that. And then the next step is to draw the mirror image of this molecule labeled C. So let's do that. So here's the mirror image of molecule C, which is now labeled D. And uh, the next step that we want to do here is to determine whether C and D are non-superimposable mirror images. And so if we were to rotate this molecule so that the carbon atoms line up and then determine whether the chlorine atoms will also line up. And so if you were to rotate this uh, 180 degrees, then you can see that the chlorine atom will be now facing the front and then the hydrogen will now be facing towards the back. And so you can see that they're non-superimposable mirror images. And so because of that, C and D are also enantiomers, a pair of enantiomers. So now we've determined that A and B are enantiomers. So let me just write that down. So we know that A and B are enantiomers. We also know that C and D are enantiomers of one another. So we have a total of four uh, stereoisomers, which we calculated. And, um, and so that means that this pair of enantiomer right here, A and B, are diastereomers of C and D. And here's the second molecule on the right. We can do the same thing. The first thing that we want to do is to label the stereogenic centers. So when you look at this carbon right here, you can see that it is a chiral carbon because it contains four different groups. We have bromine, uh, a methyl group, and then the rest of the molecule here. And then this carbon is also connected to a hydrogen atom. So this is a stereogenic carbon.
And then this carbon is stereogenic as well because it contains four different groups. We have chlorine, methyl group, the rest of the molecule, and then a hydrogen atom. And then the next step here is to draw the three-dimensional structure of this molecule along with its mirror image. So here's the three-dimensional structure of the molecule, and I've also drawn the mirror image of the molecule. And so you can see that I've chosen bromine and chlorine as the atoms facing towards the front, and then both hydrogen atoms facing towards the back. And you can see that in the mirror image that the carbon atoms will actually line up when you stack them together. However, uh, you can see that the bromine atom is bonded to this carbon atom, the second carbon atom right here on the left. Um, but on this second carbon, you have the chlorine atom. And so when you stack them together, the two mirror images, they're actually non-superimposable mirror images. Because again, the bromine is on the left-hand side, but for the mirror image, the bromine is on the right-hand side. So you have alternating um, atoms there. You have bromine versus chlorine, and then you have chlorine versus the bromine. And so the atoms don't line up. And so therefore, A and B here are non-superimposable mirror images. They are enantiomers. So the next step here is to identify the rest of the stereoisomers. So you can see that we have two chiral centers or two stereogenic centers. Therefore, there's a maximum uh, of four possible stereoisomers. And so again, the easiest way to do that is to pick one of these enantiomers as our basis. All right? And so let's pick enantiomer A here. And then we're going to switch uh, the hydrogen and the bromine atom, either the hydrogen and the bromine or the hydrogen and the chlorine atom. Uh, we just have to pick one stereogenic center here. And so, again, we'll pick enantiomer A and then switch the positions of hydrogen and bromine. So here's the three-dimensional structure of the new molecule. So you can see that I've switched the positions of hydrogen and the bromine. Uh, the hydrogen is now oriented towards the front, and then the bromine is oriented towards the back. And I've also drawn the mirror image of the molecule. So again, this molecule labeled C is, is now a completely new molecule, different from A. And so you can see that, uh, again, this is the mirror image of molecule C. And so now we have to determine whether C and D are non-superimposable mirror images. And so if we were to... Uh, stack them right now you can see that the hydrogen and the chlorine will be on the right hand side and won't align with the other atoms but what if we switch them or, or what if we uh, rotated it 180 degrees um, so you can see that when you rotate this 180 degrees the chlorine this chlorine atom will be facing towards the back and this hydrogen atom will now be facing towards the front and you can see that in this mirror image the chlorine is still facing towards the front <clears throat> and the hydrogen facing towards the back and so C and D are considered non-superimposable mirror images and therefore they are also enantiomers of one another so now we have a total of four stereoisomers here we have a pair of enantiomers A and B and then another pair of enantiomers, C and D. And A and C here are completely different compounds or molecules. And they are considered diastereomers because they are non-mirror images of one another. And they're also non-superimposable. B and D are the same way. B and D are diastereomers of one another because they are non-mirror images and non-superimposable. And so in other words... A and B are diastereomers of C and D. So here's another example. Find all the stereoisomers of 2,3-dibromobutane. So you can see the structure of the, of the molecule here. So we have two chiral centers because you can see that this carbon contains four different groups. We have bromine, carbon, and then carbon that's bonded to a bromine and then also bonded to a hydrogen atom. So you can see that both um, carbons here are stereogenic centers. So there must be a total of four maximum possible stereoisomers for this molecule. So let's find out. So here you can see that I've already drawn the structure, the three-dimensional structure of the molecule. So I've arbitrarily chosen the bromine atoms um, to be facing towards the front. 
and then the hydrogen atoms bonded to these carbons to be facing towards the back. And again, you can omit those uh, hydrogens because they are the lowest priority anyways. Um, and you can see here on the right-hand side that I've also drawn the mirror image of the molecule. So you can see that um, when you rotate this molecule in a specific way so that you can line them up, you can see that the bromine atoms will not exactly align with each other. So when you rotate it in this direction, okay, from this axis right here, then you can see that we're going to have an up carbon, right? So if we rotate in this direction, you're going to have an up carbon, which is shown here. And then the bromine will now be at the bottom, pointing down, which is similar to this bromine right here. And then this bromine will be pointing up along with an up carbon and then a down carbon. And so you can see that once you rotate this in this direction, about 180 degrees, that the bromine atoms will now be oriented uh, facing towards the back. And so therefore, uh, these molecules, I'm just going to label them A and B here, are non-superimposable mirror images. And therefore, these two are considered enantiomers. So then the next step here is to find the rest of the stereoisomers. So we can pick either A or B and then uh, switch the groups. So I'm just going to pick A here and draw the uh, new molecule in which the bromine will now be uh, or one of the bromines will now be facing at the back and then the hydrogen will now be oriented uh, facing towards the front. So here's the three-dimensional structure of the new molecule. You can see that the bromine now uh, is oriented at the back and then of course the hydrogen is oriented towards uh, the front but I've omitted it again because it's a hydrogen atom. We only really care about the bromine atoms here. And I've also drawn the mirror image of the molecule and as you can see <clears throat> If you were to rotate it in the same direction, in the same axis, basically on this axis, if you were to rotate this in this direction as well, you can see now that this carbon is going to be an up carbon right here. And then you're going to have a down carbon and then an up carbon and then an up, uh, I mean down carbon, facing down. And so once you rotate this in this direction, 180 degrees, this um, bromine that was originally oriented towards the back is now going to be oriented towards the front. So you can see that in its mirror image, it's oriented at the front as well. And so when you rotate this 180 degrees in this direction, there, these two are going to be identical molecules. They are uh, superimposable mirror images. And so what we have here are basically identical molecules. So these two shown here, are actually one and the same and so therefore this molecule right here is a diastereomer of A and B so again this molecule right here is still a diastereomer of A and B so this compound is also known as a meso compound because it's a compound containing multiple stereogenic centers yet it has superimposable mirror image and so because it has superimposable mirror image this must be an achiral compound or this molecule here is an achiral compound containing multiple uh, stereogenic centers so it makes this compound a meso compound so in the next few slides you'll see that the three-dimensional structure of 2,3-dibromobutane was drawn a little bit differently and the reason why is because this single bond right here is a sigma bond Right? And so if you remember the nature of sigma bonds, you can rotate them around this bond. And so if you look at this bromine right here, and let's say that you rotate this uh, part of the molecule right here, 180 degrees around this bond, then you'll see that this bromine atom will now be at the bottom. Right? It's, not it's now oriented towards the front as well, in which this carbon atom is going to be an up carbon atom. And so both bromine atoms for this molecule will now be facing towards the front. So here we're basically looking at the same exact molecule, just drawn in a different uh, orientation because this bond right here can rotate, or this molecule can rotate around this bond. This is sigma bond. And so you can see that these two molecules are enantiomers because they are non-superimposable mirror images. So here you can see that these two molecules right here are superimposable mirror images, and so they are not enantiomers. 
um, but rather identical molecules. And so compounds that contain multiple stereogenic centers that are superimposable uh, mirror images are called meso compounds. So here's a slide that basically summarizes what meso compounds are. So the compound C that we looked at, which is shown here, contains a, an internal plane of symmetry. And so because it contains a, an internal plane of symmetry, it's considered an achiral molecule. So meso compounds are achiral compounds that contain multiple stereogenic centers, multiple chiral centers. And so again, compound C is considered a meso compound. Again, meso compounds generally contain internal plane of symmetry so that the left half looks exactly like the right half. And so 2,3-dibromobutane only contains a total of three stereoisomers instead of the calculated four. And so two of them are a pair of enantiomers, and then the third one is a meso compound. So here are all of the stereoisomers of 2,3-dibromobutane. So again, we have a total of three stereoisomers. Two of them are uh, a pair of enantiomers, and then the third one is a me meso compound. So, in other words, A and B here are diastereomers of compound C, the meso compound. So, here's a practice problem. Which compounds are meso compounds? So, remember, meso compounds are compounds containing multiple stereogenic centers um, as well as uh, an internal plane of symmetry. So, let's take a look at the first one here. So, we have uh, a stereogenic center right here and another stereogenic center right here. And when you... Uh, draw a line in the middle right here that's an internal plane of symmetry and so compound A here is considered a meso compound and for the second compound here labeled B you can see that these two carbon atoms right here are stereogenic centers or chiral carbons and so in order to determine whether this is a meso compound we have to um, try to find out whether it contains a an internal plane of symmetry and so we can rotate this uh, carbon here around this bond. And so if you rotate it 180 degrees going up, then this hydroxy will now be pointing up and this methyl group will now be pointing down. But then because this is oriented towards the back, when you rotate it 180 degrees going up, it's going to be oriented towards the front. And so you can see that it doesn't have any internal plane of symmetry because one hydroxy is pointing towards the back and then the second hydroxy group is pointing towards the front and so uh, B here does not contain a, an internal plane of symmetry and therefore it's not a meso compound and for the third compound here labeled C we have a bromine that's facing towards the front and then another bromine atom that's facing towards the back and you can see that both uh, carbon atoms right here one and two are stereogenic centers stereogenic carbon and so, but then uh, you have to realize that, um, again, a single bond can rotate around the bond. And so if you were to rotate this part of the molecule so that now it's uh, oriented pointing down, this bromine is going to be pointing down. And then this down carbon is now going to be an up carbon, which is in alignment with this carbon right here. And then, again, rotating this 180 degrees would... Um, result in the orientation of this bromine uh, facing towards the back and so now you have an internal uh, plane of symmetry because both bromine atoms now are going to be or uh, facing towards the back and so since we have multiple stereogenic centers and the fact that we have an internal plane of symmetry compound C is going to be a meso compound as well and for the fourth molecule here we have uh, these two carbon atoms that are stereogenic centers because they contain four different groups. And when you look at this bromine atom right here, you can see that it's pointing up and this bromine right here is pointing down. And then this chlorine atom is facing towards the front and then this other chlorine atom is facing towards the back. And you can see that this single bond right here can be rotated. And so if you rotate this uh, in this direction so that the chlorine will be pointing up and then the bromine would now be pointing down you can see that this chlorine atom would also be facing towards the back. And so now we have an internal plane of symmetry, which makes compound D a meso compound. 